In this tutorial, we are going to implement a reusable player movement system that uses the Cinemachine package to easily create a third-person camera that will allow us to freely look around our avatar, and we will move in the direction that the camera is facing. We will use Unity's character controller to move around and we will make the system reusable, so simply swapping the source of the input for the AI script will allow us to reuse the same system for an AI agent that will start following the player if we are in his range. Hi, I'm Peter and welcome to Sunny Valley Studio Tutorials. Before we start, a big thanks to my patrons. Guys, I really appreciate your support and it really motivates me to record more tutorials. Now. Without further ado, let's create a new Unity project and import all the necessary assets. We need to open our asset store. If you do not have the window opened, you can go to top menu, window and choose the asset store. What we will search for is basic motion free. So type it into search bar and this will pop up the Kevin Iglesias basic motion free pack. So we need to download it. So click on it and choose download. It is a free package. So import it into your own project. Import everything. When you're done, let's import the Cinemachine. To do that, let's go to top menu, window, package manager. Here we will need to search for Cinemachine. And this will pop up. We need to simply install it. Wait for it to install and we will be ready to go. Okay, with that's done. Let's preset our scene. What we will need to do is to create a new 3D object in our hierarchy. Let's choose the plane. Great. Let's increase its size to maybe 20 by 20 on X and Z scale. Okay. This is pretty wide. So let's go to assets. Let's right click create new material. Okay. Let's call it ground. Let's choose the albedo choose the default checkerboard and let's change the color to something brownish okay I think this might do and to make it visible drag our ground material onto our plane okay we can go to our material and increase our tiling to see better okay great now we have our ground let's go to Kevin Iglesias folder let's search for models Folder and let's drag our basic motion dummy into our scene. Let's change its name to player and let's make sure it has the proper layer. We will add a layer, let's call it player. It will be necessary for our AI at the end. So again, let's click player, choose the layer to be player. Yes, let's look at our player. It has animator component but doesn't have the controller. So let's go back to assets folder. Let's right click and create our animator controller. Let's call it animator. Okay, let's drag it to our player animator component controller field. Okay, now what we need to do is choose our player and open up the animator. If you do not have it opened, go to window, animation and choose animator. Okay. Now what we need to do is to create a new blend tree here. So let's right click, create state from new blend tree and it will create our default blend tree. Let's double click it to open it up. Okay, now we will quickly set up the animation. I will not be going through all the options that are here. So let's choose the blend tree and we can see in the inspector uh, window that we have motions. We will add three motions using the plus a symbol add motion field add motion field and add motion field now we can choose the motion fields so let's use this dot here first field will be our idle animation so let's choose basic motion idle 0 1 for the th second motion we will use our walk animation at the end and for the third motion we will choose the run animation and what i want to do is manually set the threshold that it will change the animation with so let's choose the animation threshold checkbox and uncheck it great now what i want to do is set the threshold for the middle animation for walk 
as 0 0.2 great and we can check how it works using the bottom right window let's press play and we can change the blend parameter in the blend tree and we can see that if we increase it it starts running and it is blended well so we do not see the transitions okay we can stop it and last thing i want to do is to change the blend parameter in the left window in our animator so let's double tap it and let's ch change it to move okay so that's it for our animation so our player has animations let's go back to scene view and as uh, we want to move our character we need to add to it character component so choose add component button in the inspector and search for character controller here it is let's add it to our player and as you can see it isn't properly set the collider is too low so let's set it up properly what we will need to set is the height let's change it to 1.9 we will want to change the y to be 1 so the center of our collider will be 1 and it should be pretty good last thing before we go to scripting is to set our cinemachine so in the top menu we have new menu called cinemachine let's open it up and let's choose the free look camera it will be automatically created what we need to do here is having the cinema machine selected let's drag our player into follow and look at uh, fields so let's drag our player here okay and if we press play now we will be able to move our camera around our player so i want to change some settings for our cinema machine camera as you can see it has a lot of th settings and we need to change only some of them so for starters let's go to axis control uh, section and i want to change the y-axis to be inverted and x-axis to not be inverted great now i want to also set the orbits which is below the axis control section so the orbits direct what height and what radius have our camera when it goes up and down so if you press play we can see that our camera in the scene view goes down and up and we can preset some of those settings so what i have found useful is to set the bottom rig height to be 2.3 and change the radiuses for bottom rig to be 4 for middle rig to be 4 and for top rig to be 3 okay so now we can press play and we will see a little bit of change here okay but it isn't perfect so what we will want to do is slide down and we have those settings for each of the rigs now our interest is in aim section in the tracked object offset i want to change the settings for the y value for the offset so for our top rig i found useful to set it to 1.5 for the middle rig i want it to be set to 1 and you can see that the camera went higher in our scene view and for the bottom rig i find it useful to set it to 1.3 okay now let's press play and we can see that it looks much better now we can view our player and what is in front of him okay great now in the next video we are going to take care of getting the input from the user so see you in the next video